After you've set up WordPress hosting, you will need to install WordPress. Don't have WordPress hosting yet? Please view the video on how to set up WordPress hosting first before viewing this video. There's a link below. Installing WordPress takes only five minutes if you know the exact steps which I will show you. I'm Laura from solopreneurmentor.com. I have 15 years experience building my online web development business from home called D3 Website Solutions. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to install WordPress in less than five minutes. I will also show you how to log into your new WordPress website and install a free WordPress theme. Please keep in mind that I have chosen a very simple theme to show you today. The process I take will not be the same for all themes, but you can make a complete website using the free WordPress theme I will show you. Let's tackle your technology trouble together. This tutorial is intended for beginners. You can do it, I promise. For this tutorial, you will need WordPress hosting. If you have not done that yet, please look below this video for the resources to complete this step first before proceeding. One of the reasons why I showed you how to sign up for InMotion hosting is because they offer a control panel as the way of um, managing your website. If you don't have access to control panel, this might be a little more difficult. However, most hosts do offer the option of how to install WordPress. Um, and so if you're in control panel or you're in some sort of um, some sort of panel like this that offers you the ability to install WordPress, it's going to be easy to do. If you're unsure about that, make sure you ask your host um, how to do that. So you can either type in WordPress, which won't show up for me, but it's possible it might show up for you. It just depends on the way that control panel is set up with your host. Um, or you can type in site software and you'll find it down here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to click on WordPress. And then what I want to do is I want to put in an admin user and password for WordPress that I can easily remember. Um, so what you can do is you can click on this little generate password here. And once you do that, you'll want to type in maybe password length of 18 to make it as strong as possible and then click on regenerate. I'm going to go ahead and do that and paste that into the password. I've already got my password in. I've got my email address. And then what I'm going to do is not choose blueskycounselingnc.com because again, that's the one pointing to Wix and we can't use that right now. We're going to use the temporary domain name that we set up in the previous video. And then we don't want to put it in the directory WordPress. We want it to be the main website. So go ahead and delete that out. What we're going to do now is we're going to type in a blog name. So this will be your business name, um, Blue Sky Christian Counseling. And then if you have a tagline or a description that you want to add in, you certainly can, or you can leave it blank. I'm gonna have a look over here and see, um, maybe put in her name. Um, and then you can leave the table prefix as WP. Um, if you want more security, you can certainly change this to something different um, so that um, if someone does gain access to your website, they may not know the table prefix, which might make it a little more difficult for them to do um, what they're trying to do. So we want to create a new database as well, and we just click on install. On the next screen, I was redirected to say, great, it's been installed. You can go visit your website by clicking on here. Um, and then it gave me the username and password that I had set up just as a reminder. So make sure you write that down. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is the default install of WordPress. It's the theme that is def uh, the default that gets installed every year. WordPress puts out a new theme and names it for the year. So this is a 2017 theme. Um, it's a starting point. Um, but what I'm going to show you next is how to actually install a new theme. Um, that might be a little bit more appealing to your design sense. So I'm going to hop over to Site Origin. And this is a website. Um, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. What I really just love about them is I love their page builder. Their page builder is an awesome page builder. It's a drag and drop builder. Very, very easy to use. Um, it's free. 
and it makes WordPress very similar in functionality to Wix. And so I always recommend you use a page builder. There are tons of them out there. Some of them you have to pay for, some of them you don't, but page or, or site origins is free and it works really, really well. So what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna install page builder. But what I've also decided is I like their themes as well. They're very simple and clean, um, very similar to what you would find on a Wix template. And so I wanted to show you that there are some free themes here that Site Origin has put out. They're excellent themes, they work really, really well. Um, but additionally, you can find themes all over the internet. There are just thousands upon thousands of themes. Some are free, some are not. Um, so I am not gonna cover that at all in this video, um, but in future videos, I might cover how to choose a theme. Um, so be looking out for that. But for now, what I'm just gonna show you is how to install one theme, um, and that is gonna be the theme from Site Origin. So I've actually looked at all their free themes, and they've also got site packs. And I really like their site packs because what they do is they show you how you can use their theme to build your business website. Particularly, I liked the baseline theme. And so if you click on view demo, you can see how they've used it. They've got a photo slider up here. Um, they've got you know a call to action, what this particular business does, and then another um, call out section, testimonial section, and then their footer. And they've got different pages and stuff. I think it's real clean, it's real nice to look at. Again, very similar to what you find in a Wix template. You could choose alternatively just to do one of their WordPress themes. Um, they have a few of them. I, I also particularly liked the unwind theme. That was one other one I was looking at. Um, you can see again they have a demo that you can look at. Um, the reason why I also liked Baseline is because it was simple and they offered me a home page design so I don't have to try to figure out how do I want my home page to look. It can be a little paralyzing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the themes and I'm actually going to choose site packs and I'm going to download the site pack for the Baseline theme. Now I'm going to click on download site pack. It's going to ask me for my newsletter. I'm going to just click no thanks. I'm already subscribed to them anyway. And my um, my file has downloaded down here. I'm using Chrome, so this is where it ends up. Just make sure you know where your downloads end up so you can find it later. I'm going to click on show in Finder. And now I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop this into um, my documents, my folder for my for this particular client. So I've got my zip. What I just need to do now is go back to my WordPress website and I'm gonna log in. And how I do that is I type in wp-admin um, and you're gonna click enter after that. And then you're gonna type in the username and password that you set earlier and then click on remember me and log in. Once you're logged in, this is the first time you're logged in to WordPress, I like to do a few housekeeping things um, to WordPress itself just to keep it running or just because there's some settings that are really important um, that need to be updated for every website. So where we're gonna go under settings and we're going to go to general. So that's the first place we're going to start. And you can see I did set the site title and the site tagline. Now if I hadn't done that um, when I was installing, this is where you could change that information. The first thing I want to do though is I want to change which day of the week. Um, a day starts on Sunday for me, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Sunday. And then I also want to change the time zone. I live on the East Coast. So I want to make sure that WordPress uses the East Coast time zone. The reason for that is because if I post any, um, if I do any blog posts that are um, scheduled for future, so let's say I want it to post uh, to show up on a, on at noon 
or on, at midnight on a certain day, if this time zone is not set correctly, then it won't actually post on noon my time, it would post at noon at whatever time zone this was set for. So make sure you set your time zone as well and click Save Changes after that. Next, we're gonna go down to Reading and um, our front page, we're gonna probably change this after we install the theme, so just leave this for now. But the basic thing I wanted to do was I just wanna show a summary for the RSS feed. Now an RSS feed is what delivers your posts into someone's mailbox. And it can be really annoying if you have a really long post and they get um, just all of the information, not just their mailbox, but their RSS feed readers. Um, so I always choose summary. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discourage search engines from indexing the site because this is just a, um, a demo site right now. It's just, it's not the live site currently. So I'm gonna discourage the search engines until I'm ready to go live with the site, at which point I'm gonna uncheck this. So I'm gonna click Save Changes. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the permalinks and I want permalink structure of post name. It's a lot cleaner um, and it, um, it, it's very similar, ex especially to Wix. You can see they have that kind of structure as well. So we wanna maintain that similar kind of structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on um, post name here and then I'm gonna click on save changes. And then I'm going to go to sample posts and I'm gonna delete the sample posts by clicking there, clicking on all of them or clicking on trash. If there's multiple ones, I can move them to trash and click apply. Now things when they get moved into trash can be removed from trash if you accidentally trash something by restoring it or you can delete it permanently. Um, and then I also want to go to sample page and delete the sample page. Um, and then sometimes there's also sample comments, but if you delete the sample post, usually it deletes the sample comments as well. The last thing I always like to do is I like to go to the installed plugins and I like to delete the Hello Dolly plugin because it's useless, but it's um, just showing you how to use a plugin and that's why they always install it with WordPress. So I just always usually delete it. So after we've done all that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the theme that we've chosen, which I've already downloaded. Um, so I'm gonna go to appearance and I'm going to go to themes. And you can see these are the three demo themes it comes with. I also like to go through, click on them and delete these older ones because I'm not going to use them. And anything you can do to minimize the number of security holes there might be. Um, for example, the more plugins you have, the more themes you have, the more entry points there are into WordPress, um, the worse it is for security. So I always delete the ones I'm not using. I'm not gonna delete the one that's actually active at this point. I might delete it after I go ahead and install the theme I'm going to install. This particular theme that pack that I've downloaded is a little different. It doesn't work by installing it as a theme. It, install, it works instead as installing it as a plugin. So I wanna go to Add New Under Plugins, and I'm gonna upload a plugin, and I'm gonna choose my file, which was a zip, zip file I downloaded earlier, and click Install Now. Once the plugin is downloaded and installed, I'm gonna click Activate Plugin. And then this particular plugin is gonna do all the hard work I need in order to install the theme in the plugin. So it's asking me to type in the word accept and start import. And it's gonna do everything it needs to do. I'm gonna pause the recording while this works. Now just because this particular theme pack does things differently than other places, it doesn't mean you can't install a theme um, that you might choose to find somewhere else. The important part to remember is when you're looking for a new theme, that you look at their documentation to see how good they document it for you so that you can install it yourself. So most themes actually, let's go ahead and return to dashboard. Looks like they're done. Most themes actually, you go to appearance and then themes and upload the theme. And then they'll tell you there are some plugins you need to install, 
click here to install those. This particular one started with the plugin first and then installed the theme and the demo content and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little different, but it's okay. So the importer has run successfully. Unless you plan on running it again, you should deactivate the importer plugin. I'm gonna deactivate it because I don't wanna accidentally overwrite everything that just happened. And you can see that it installed the site origin page builder, which is what I wanted. If it didn't have, the theme did not come with the page builder, I would have downloaded or I would have installed page builder. And how you can quickly do that is actually go to add new and then click on, type in page builder. And it should show up by site origin. Yep, there it is. And you can download it there and, and install it, but it's already installed. So I'm gonna go back to my installed plugins. And then you can see it's got this site origin CSS. It's an advanced CSS editor from site origin, which is really also makes it very similar to Wix, um, makes it easy to use. And then the installer to install all the themes and plugins you need to get started on your new site. And then the widgets bundle is also very important. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and look at what the website looks like. So you can see this looks exactly like the demo site. And this is what we're gonna start off with now when we're um, when I'm when I'm taking the old Wix site and transferring it now into WordPress. And that's where we're gonna start in the next um, week's video. We just tackled your technology trouble together. Doesn't it feel good to know how to use technology the way it was intended? Thanks for watching this video and please be sure to check out the additional resources listed below and share this video with any friends that might need technology help too. Make sure you come back to watch the next video in this series, which is how to customize a WordPress theme. Please visit Solopreneur Mentor for more tips, tricks, and tutorials on how to use technology to make you more productive in building your online business.